Shalom everyone, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserve Jonathan here with a daily update. We are nearing the beginning of the sixth day of this war that was forced upon us and I would like to give you an update about the situation on the ground. Uh, to make things clearer we have a map and I'll use that in order to show the places that I'm talking about. Today, uh, earlier today, many international journalists were given a unique opportunity to see, experience and tell the world some of the atrocities that Hamas inflicted on Israeli civilians. Yesterday it was a community called Nachal Oz. Today international media visited Be'eri. Kibbutz Be'eri, this is the Gaza Strip here, as I'm sure you're all, all too familiar. If we zoom in closer we can see that if we zoom in and see the distance between the Gaza Strip here, the border, and our fence, and then we have Kibbutz Be'eri here. So, quite the distance, not at all the closest community, Nachal Oz and Kfar Aza were much closer, but definitely one of the communities that was close, and today, I'll zoom in on the community itself, uh, you can see the lush green trees, uh, the grass and the nice houses and agricultural areas, unfortunately, that is no longer how Kibbutz Be'eri looks. The scenes are out of a zombie movie. It's a war zone. And I've heard a seasoned war correspondent who, after walking there, described it as the worst thing he has ever seen. Nothing less. And that should tell, tell you something how horrific the scenes were. Uh, so out of 1,000 people, Israelis, who lived in this beautiful community, more than 100 were killed. And today the body bags, many body bags, were uh, evacuated from that kibbutz, including those of children and including those of babies. And we got very, very disturbing reports of, uh, that came from the ground that there were babies that had been beheaded. And I admit, it took us some time to really understand and, and to verify that report. And it was hard to believe that even Hamas could uh, uh, perform such a barbaric act. But after eyewitnesses came forward and after a senior official in the Israeli coronary service, Zaka, came forward on record on CBS News and said, yes, I saw the bodies of beheaded babies. I think we can now say with relative confidence that this is unfortunately what happened in Be'eri. Be this is what Hamas did to Israeli civilians. There was bodies scattered everywhere, mutilated, uh, women and children that were handcuffed and shot, executed, houses torched and burned, and people who were either burned inside or suffocated those that Hamas couldn't get in and uh, force them out. Those were the scenes in uh, Kibbutz Be'eri. And in a sharp turn, I would like to go straight into the Gaza Strip and speak a little bit about Hamas, what Hamas has in the Gaza Strip and under the Gaza Strip, because there is much more than meets the eye and much more than what you see on news coverage of cameras that are uh, gazing at the uh, Gaza horizon and all of a sudden there's a plume of smoke and perhaps a building collapses as a result of an Israeli strike. That doesn't tell the story of what's going on in Gaza. The story is as follows. This area, the Gaza Strip, is one of the densest populated areas in the world, about 20 miles from one end to the other and about 9 miles in the widest location and less than 6 in the most narrow. What Hamas has done since they took control almost 20 years ago of the Gaza Strip is basically to build a network of tunnels from Gaza City and under Gaza City, which is the center and the biggest uh, uh, part of their infrastructure, all the way down to Khan Yunus and Rafah. So imagine we're looking at the Gaza Strip, but really think of the Gaza Strip as one layer for the civilians and then another layer for Hamas. And what we're doing now is that we are trying to get to that second layer that Hamas has built, by the way, only for itself, not to be accessed by the civilians. These aren't bunkers for the 
Gazan civilians to have access to when Israel is striking. No, it's only for Hamas and other terrorists so that they can continue to fire rockets at Israel, to plan operations, to launch terrorists into Israel. That's the only thing that this network is for. And tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to show you an even better visualization of how this looks so you can get a glimpse of what Hamas built uh, under the Gaza Strip. So that is what we are uh, attacking. Uh, and the Israeli Air Force has been striking a lot of targets in various neighborhoods in uh, Gaza. This is a zoom in on Gaza City. There's a neighborhood here in this area uh, called Rimal. That was quite heavily targeted because there's lots of Hamas infrastructure and other facilities in this area. And there's other neighborhoods along the Gaza Strip that have been targeted for the simple fact the neighborhood wasn't targeted, but specific military targets inside were targeted and many of them were struck. What we're doing is prioritizing striking commanders, senior officials in Hamas from all echelons. Whenever we have intelligence that indicates the whereabouts of a senior Hamas official or military commander, we strike in that location. And the places where we know that Hamas has infrastructure, whether it is financial or construction or command and control, collection of intelligence, research, research and development, whatever it is, if it belongs to Hamas, we are striking it. And that's what's going on in the Gaza Strip today as we speak during the night and that's what we've been doing uh, over the last, let's say, day and a half in a significant aerial campaign. Outside of the Gaza Strip, you can see the area here, is where our 300,000 plus minus ground forces are located, reserve forces that have been called up in what is the biggest and fastest reserve call up in Israeli history. They are now in the south and if you've been watching TV, you've seen tours or convoys of tanks, APCs, artillery uh, pieces and many other things that are in the south directed towards the Gaza Strip and making preparations for the next stage of the war which will come when the timing is opportune and fit for our purposes. Let's uh, move up and zoom out and quickly go over events that, uh, we, uh, that happened during the night in the northern part of Israel. So I've zoomed out and we can see the uh, border with Lebanon here, Golan Heights, Lake Tiberias and uh, Lebanon on this side and Israel here. So we've had a few uh, events on the northern border. The bottom line is that Hezbollah is deployed on the, on the other side of the border. We are deployed in significant numbers, strength and capabilities on the southern part of the border. And we are very vigilant to any attempt by Hezbollah to escalate the situation. Uh, there was one attempt by Hezbollah, they fired an anti-tank missile yesterday, unfortunately wounded one soldier, but other than that, relatively stable on the northern front, and we are monitoring the situation there to make sure that it doesn't change. On, in the Mediterranean, obviously not marked here, but in the Mediterranean, a US battle group is making its way, and uh, I think almost arrived, I think they'll be positioned somewhere around here, northern part of Israel, along the Lebanese coast, at a safe and tactically wise distance from that area. And the message from the US Central Command is one of presence and perhaps room for thought for any other Iranian proxies in the region, Hezbollah or anybody else, whether or not it would be wise to engage in escalating the war against Israel. So that, that is the situation on the sixth day as we begin, the sixth day of fighting. It is now Thursday, the 12th, and we are nearing 5 a.m. And this is our weekly, or sorry, our daily update. If you like this information, information, if you find it useful, share it with others so that they can see the truth from our perspective, understand what's going on on our borders, and for you to get a glimpse of what's planned ahead and where things may evolve. I hope you find it useful. Share it. Follow our other platforms for excellent information on what's happening. And I really hope that this will be a quieter day, knowing that we have a long and very, very dangerous road ahead of us. Thank you for being with us.